welcome to the African wilderness. You're joining us on a bug out 4x4 camp. Survival takes on many shapes and forms and wilderness survival in a bug out situation should be our last resort. That means that the first part of your journey in bugging out is usually going to be in your vehicle. So an essential part of any preparedness plan is making sure that your vehicle will be able to fulfill all of your survival needs. That means you get to take all of your favorite gear and equipment and do a great bug out 4x4 vehicle build. Now this video is part of a series of videos where I'll go more into some of the other aspects of the build, things like the water tanks and the water system that I've got going, the electronic and the solar system that I've got going. But for today, I'm going to be focusing on fuel and gas and how I manage to carry extra gas and fuel on my roof rack. I'm Clarice, welcome to the Live Ready channel. that bugging out in a vehicle or overlanding has nothing to do with survival, think again. This entire campsite is full of truckers, hitches and event hitches. You've still got to know where to go and find water. You've still got to know how to navigate. So all of those skills in survival also filter into overlanding and bugging out with a vehicle. I'm just busy making myself a cup of coffee here. And this gas bottle actually gets stowed on top of my roof rack really easily. So on this vehicle, I've added a couple of water tanks, a 67 and a 42 liter water tank. I've added some jerry cans for extra fuel on the top. I've also added a solar power generator and some solar panels and a whole bunch of extras. You can imagine that carrying over 100 liters of water in your vehicle takes up a lot of room. For that reason, it's great to be able to store stuff like that on your roof rack. And that's why I've opted for Front Runner. They sell everything from camping fridges right through to roof racks, ladders, anything that you can think of that your vehicle needs for a long distance trip or for a bug out mission, you can find on their website. I'll post the link below. But all of those things require storage space. What is going on here now? Now it's really important to be able to warm food and water and to have enough gas as this helps us with thermoregulation. It's one of the great principles of survival. So I've got this gas bottle here and that helps me to cook things, to boil my water, to make sure that it's drinkable, um, to make hot water bottles, anything that I need around camp that needs heating up. Think about all of those things that are everyday needs that we actually take for granted in our homes. That's really great if you don't want to make a fire every time that you want to heat or cook something. Have a nice cup of coffee first. Now nobody said that bugging out has to be difficult and this is a call to live closer to nature. God wants us to enjoy the wilderness, to enjoy the experience of cooking and setting up a campsite, to live closer to His creation, to remember where we came from and who our Creator is and what our purpose is. So let me show you how I managed to store all this stuff on my vehicle. So this vehicle is a 90 series Prado and it actually doesn't have any of the front runner specified things for the vehicle on it. I've got a much larger roof rack and this is a Defender, I think it's the new Defender ladder, which is not made for this vehicle at all. So if you are going to do a build and you're going to modify things to suit your vehicle, get a great company who knows what they're doing. So I did this build at R&D Offroad and the guys there were super helpful and they had an absolute can-do attitude. If you're in Cape Town and you're looking for someone to do a build for you, definitely contact them. I'll put their link in the description below as well. I wanted a side mounting ladder because it is where I tend to use it most often. Instead of having a very narrow pole that hurts your foot, especially if you're barefoot um, and can be really slippery in wet conditions, it's got a really wide step for your foot to go on. It's also got a really wide landing at the top. And I like the fact that it folds easily and can come down whenever you need it. And I just like the look of it as well. So that's also something that caught my attention on Frontrunner's products is they make everything 
to match. So it looks neat, it looks really good. Often roof racks can look a bit like you've just thrown whatever together and it becomes a bit like a Christmas tree. Everything's different colors and it doesn't really work for me. I like everything to be the same, I like it to look neat and I like it to be modular. So if I want to move the jerry cans to the back of the roof rack and I want to put them in whatever position, I can absolutely do that. If I want to put a rooftop tent on here, I can do that as well. So that's where the guys at R&D Offroad were really helpful. They actually helped me to measure out this roof rack so that I can fit a rooftop tent on here at a later stage. There's another principle in survival. We really need to be able to pack a shelter in our bag out vehicle. It doesn't matter what shelter you pack though. It doesn't matter what jerry cans you get. It doesn't matter what sort of setup you've got. As long as you can absolutely cover those basic principles of survival in your vehicle, you're good to go. You can also obviously take all of your toys along if you want to. And some of the toys that we have, things like motorbikes, kayaks, those kinds of things can be really helpful in a bug out situation as well. Think about fuel efficiency, using a motorbike to get resources instead of using your entire rig to travel to and from a campsite or a kayak in the case of fishing where you'd want to be able to acquire resources from whatever water source you've set your camp up nearby. Because this roof rack is actually much bigger than the specified one for my vehicle, R&D Offroad went and added some extra feet for the roof rack. This enables it to support much more weight, especially at the front and the back of the roof rack. So how this mounts on here, it basically has a halo that you put on, hopefully straight. And then it's got two clamps on the side I don't even undo both clamps to get it on and off. I literally just undo the one. Make sure that's straight. And it just presses down and clips into place. And that is sturdy as anything. Now you can adjust the height of the halo to accommodate whatever size gas bottle you want to keep. In order to secure it in place, I've just got some, what are these, like travel locks. And it's a combination lock, so you don't have to keep any keys for it. There you go, gas bottle back on the roof. I would really have liked if um, this was a more universal locking system so that you can put padlocks in. Anybody going around with something like a multi-tool, maybe a Leatherman or even just a pair of clippers can actually clip these um, cable locks off quite easily. And gas bottles are hot property too. So if I could put proper padlocks on here, that would be great. But I did notice that the padlocks tend to rust and then they get stuck in place, but that is why you always keep a pair of bolt cutters. So over to the jerry cans, but first of all, I need to go and find my siphon pump and my bolt cutter. It's important that we're able to carry all of these things because if you're just going to stash everything in your vehicle, then you're gonna end up with a really messy vehicle. You're never gonna be able to access anything in there. And on top of that, you may be putting yourself at risk for fire or for other hazards. For example, the jerry cans that I've got sitting on the top of the roof rack are there because it is more dangerous to carry jerry cans on the inside of your vehicle Vehicle than it is on the outside. If you get into an accident, you'd want an explosion or any sort of fire that comes from those jerry cans being damaged to be on the outside of your vehicle rather than on the inside. So it really is safer to put it on the outside. I seriously considered getting a drawer system, but I continually move everything out of the vehicle to put hay bales or pallets or whatever um, I'm carting around at the time um, in here. It would also be nice to have some lockable containers in here. In my emergency container I've got all of my medical kits and I cart everything from lion scat right through to recovery gear in these boxes if I was to get a fridge a big fridge in here because we've only got the ice machine in here at the moment then I could also remove one of these stacks of boxes it also leaves enough room for you to pack your luggage and if you're looking for really nice safari luggage or luggage that is durable and can resist the wilderness go and have a look at some of Melville and Moon's luggage and gear so at the moment I've got a Grogan backpack and I've also got one of their ammo bags using it as a toiletry bag actually. But they make some really cool stuff that you can also add to the back of your belt um, or that you can clip onto different places. They've also got really great tog bags, seat covers and the work. Some of my absolute favorite gear for camping and the outdoors. Now let's get around to those jerry cans. These are the jerry cans that Frontrunner makes and I really like these because they are metal jerry cans. 
The advantage of metal over plastic is plastic can wear over time, especially if you're driving dirt roads really often. That abrasion can cause it to wear right through, creating a hole in your jerry cans where they rub against other things that you stack on your vehicle. Now, because this vehicle's roof rack is so big, um, I've actually managed to stack so many things on here that I wouldn't have been able to do with a smaller roof rack. But again, you stack so much stuff and it all rubs against each other. So do keep that in mind if you are purchasing jerry cans. Now, like I said, because I'm concerned that the stuff on my roof rack is going to get carried away when I park somewhere, even mildly dodgy, this is Africa after all, I've gone and added some extra padlocks on here just to make it look a whole lot more locked than what it actually is. I've also got the cable locks on here, so I don't need those locks anymore. And I've started to find that they get in the way a little bit. And because they're so rusted, um, I'm not actually managing to fit the key into them anymore to unlock them and to remove them. Hence the 18 inch bolt cutter. So to get this off, I'm going to have to clip these. I don't know if this is in a really great position. That's why you have bolt cutters in your car. Highly satisfying, I must admit. I get to cut another one. There you go. Right, so with my jerry cans now, more than free, I can just put my combination on here. When I'm done, really nice actually to have these combination locks on here um, because you don't need to keep keys. Okay, so again, an easy clip system that basically just pulls down to unlatch. 20 litre jerry cans and you can put single jerry cans in a bracket for a single jerry can so if you want to put maybe I don't know a couple and then one extra jerry can somewhere you can do that like I said highly modular system that front runner makes now here's a trick that I learned from the guys at R&D off-road you actually don't have to remove your jerry cans from your roof rack at all whether you want to take fuel and siphon it into your car or whether you want to actually fill the jerry cans up i have found though that if you fill the jerry cans standing upright which they're not at the moment they're leaning on their side um, then it is very full so i have had like a full-on splash of petrol in my face because i've opened the jerry can in this position so if you fill it in this position then you can open it in this position but if you fill it standing upright then you better put it back upright before you siphon fuel out of it now i've got an extra long jiggler siphon here I've basically just bought a normal jiggler siphon which probably had like a meter long tube and um, pulled the jiggler off, bought some new 12 mil tubing, put the jiggler back on and now I can siphon fuel right from my jerry cans into my petrol tank without removing my jerry cans from here. So I did actually fill this jerry can standing upright so to prevent myself getting another splash of petrol in my face I am actually going to lift it upright again. For the sake of the camera, we'll turn it around. Right, now with my pipe securely in my petrol cap, I can open this up. It has a little pin that keeps it locked. And then it just flips open. They really did make this very full. Jiggler siphon goes in. And basically all I have to do is jiggle it. And then it runs and that was really easy just to empty this jerry can out so it's still running it's going to completely empty out and i've just got to make sure that the jiggler goes to the bottom of the can to make sure i get every last drop having a modular roof rack that you can change according to the scenario that you're facing or according to the trip that you plan is really great because if you don't need extra fuel you can remove that if you need more water you can add that on this vehicle is by no means a complete build and i think anybody who's done an overlanding build or a bug out vehicle build will know that it's always a work in progress you're always adding new things or swapping things out or changing for the latest technology well, time to batten down the hatches. I think there's a storm incoming. That's it from me on this episode. If you haven't hit subscribe yet, go and do so now. Leave us a like and a comment. Let us know what your experiences are in overlanding and building your bug out vehicle. Until the next time, live ready. Woo!